give thanks family. Once again, this uh, Sifu, Sakim, Chief, Elohi, El Bay, aka Blackwater the Meta Magician. I am going to, uh, today I'm going to briefly go over um, the Watch It, Hey, Naguru meditation. It's going to be the revised version. Um, I'm going to go over it in detail without the actual meditation. I'm just going to speak on some of the aspects of it and the principles behind um, the postures uh, as well as uh, the movement of the energy throughout the, throughout the body. Um, basically, it would start from, I'm also, um, I'm going to give a more informative written um, commentary as well. Basically, um, Vajra Te Naguru meditation is a fusion of different types of meditations, one of them being uh, the Vajra Guru meditation that is uh, utilized in yoga, in uh, different um, forms of yoga. But it is a, it's a very powerful meditation. So it's a, actually is a, a bellows breathing technique where um, we utilize our stomach, our abdomen, and we allow it to go in and out very rapidly. So in that um, a very rapid flow of breath, it allows the energy or the blood basically, especially when the chest is being compressed in, the blood goes up towards the brain, and when it's going out or we are exit, we are inhaling, stomach will be going like this, so on the, in, on the exhalation, the breath goes up, on the inhalation, the breath goes down, but that fuses blood throughout the entirety of the body, and it helps vitalize all the organ systems within the body. It also brings about um, stronger immunity due to the fact that we will be activating three glands and um, these three glands is also the three elixir fields or dantians in traditional Chinese medicine and Taoism. But basically, they are the three glands of the, of the, the testes or the gonads, the testes and the ovaries. Then we have um, the abdominal gland as well as the pituitary and pineal gland, basically. So these glands hold um, a precious amount of fluids and hormones, blood different enzymes that activate those energies within the body to keep the organs at a pristine level and very healthy. So in doing such, as far as the uh, very um, powerful breathing technique, this is a very advanced technique as well. Like I said, I was saying it's a fusion of um, three different type of, uh, of meditations, one of them being the bellows breath. Bellows basically is a, an instrument or device that is utilized to um, cause fire to blow more rapidly by engaging the two handles on the bellows. It's a bag of air that you, you, you press down like this and it causes the air, to, well, the air will cause the fire to rise. So basically the two lungs will cause the rising of the Kundalini or the internal energy, basically the cerebral spinal fluid to rise back up and go to the brain or the pineal gland region and it will actually go through and fuse um, basically through those um, three endocrine glands and uh, imminently through all of the endocrine glands. But those are three major glands. The thymus gland produces T cells which will increase immunity. Of course we know that our, um, our life or essence is, is um, in the lower um, the root chakra basically or the um, sacral region as well, the adrenals producing you know, the adrenals and kidneys are connected so the adrenals produce essence and the kidneys produce the essence and it goes down to the urinary bladder at the section of the sacral nerves and then into um, uh, the gonads. And also the pituitary gland with the human uh, growth hormones as well as the pineal gland with melatonin and serotonin and different um, catecholamines. So as we produce these 
different enzymes, hormones, and chemicals, biochemicals of the body, they are all intertwined and formulate cerebral spinal fluid. But then in this pressure cooker here that we're going to be doing with the stomach, from beginning and out, watch it, hey, not guru, it will allow that energy to go back up and fuse through the circulation, the circulatory system, or the blood, and go throughout the whole body. Because you know, the blood is going to um, be in flux and flow through the entirety of the body by way of, of breath. And then the cells also will be able to be oxygenated. The blood will oxygenate the cells, the breath will oxygenate the cells, and the cells will be rejuvenated and give you livelihood and more power. It also will increase in your um, psychic abilities by fusing those three um, elements of the spirit, which are those three elixir fields as well. Getting those knots and blockages out of those areas so that the um, entirety of your um, internal workings will be able to come online properly without those uh, abnormalities of uh, blockages due to certain activities that we have participated with, even emotionally and um, spiritually. So by way of mind, we bring this in and that's intentional force. So it did so it did flow into then flow into the physical um, arena properly. So alright, with that said, oh and the third aspect with well, the other two aspects, we have bellows breathing, then we have retention breath. The retention breath is towards the end of the meditation. When we hold the breath for um, 81 to 108 heartbeats. Basically, the heartbeat is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's not going to be 1, 2, that's a second, so that would be a, a little bit um, more elongated. It's going to be very, uh, not abrupt, but a little quicker, snappy, like the heartbeat. You know? All right, so that's a heartbeat. So 81 to 108 heartbeats, depending on the practitioner and the level of their meditation. Like I said, this is a, a somewhat more advanced meditation. You would definitely want to be have an empty stomach. Um, so that would be two to two and a half hours before the meditation. Um, you you would be uh, eating, and if in the morning, um, um, definitely evacuate your um, your large intestines before um, before participating and performing this um, meditation, don't want anything going on in your lower abdomen, feces, any, any, anything like that, so go ahead and evacuate. And um, It is a good morning meditation because it stimulates blood, so it's going to give you heart energy or fire energy, but you can also do this in the evening, um, maybe not as many rounds as you may want to um, activate through the morning hours and throughout the day for, the, for your um, while you walk and do your journey. Um, at night it's, it's cool too, but um, like I said, maybe not as many um, rounds, just um, cut back or do half. It's, it's, not a, it's not like just a normal meditation where you would just be sitting still and relaxing the muscles. So it's an inner size. It also can be um, defined as a nagung, which is basically an internal meditation or internal um, work versus like a qigong meditation or a wakegong where they're mostly dealing with um, external um, means of meditation and external means of um, bringing the energy towards the, the skin. This is all going inner, so you are developing sinew basically because every organ and muscle and tissue is going to be getting stimulated by the blood. So the blood is going to strengthen your sinews or the um, fascia, every, and every part of our body is connected by way of these fascia. So the puzzle, um, the, the little um, you know lines of the puzzle will be strengthened. It's like you're putting glue in the puzzle, so it'll stay together, you know, properly and longer. All right. Um, the third aspect of the meditation is opposite not, um, nostril breathing. So we we'll be breathing in. We're going to hold. When we breathe in, we're going to hold down one nostril. First, first part of it, we just breathe out. I'm going to go over that, and this finger will be in the, the center of the brow chakra, the pituitary gland, the first eye region. And we will hold this finger, the index finger there, while holding down 
on the opposite nostril. And this will activate left and right brain activity while the energy is going up. It's going to flow into both areas of the brain simultaneously. But we breathe in, hold. This hand will be, the left hand, the left hand will be placed here if you use your right hand. Women, you could go opposite, you know what I'm saying, and use your, place your right hand on the bottom and use your left hand. Okay, so in meditation, men's hands, usually the left hand is on the bottom, right hand is on top. Alright, so that brings about a balance of our energy. So here, my left hand is going to stay down, my right hand comes up. This is going to activate left brain activity while my left hand is putting the palm of glance. See, we press in on the thumb and the index finger. This is the wisdom mudra. So what we're doing is when we're pressing in, there are reflex points here that are connected to the pineal gland on the back of the thumb. Right? Alright, so we press in on the back of the thumb, and that's going to activate the pineal gland region so that the energy will flow from the left, which is the feminine aspect. So we're balancing that energy. And this hand is going to be pressed down with the index finger in the mid-brow or the brow chakra region, the asana. And we're going to hold that here for the entirety of the meditation. Alright, so that's the third the third um, aspect or the third um, function of the, or one of the three parts of the meditation. So we have bellows breathing, we have um, oxid nostril, uh, nostril breathing, and we have retention, the retention breath. So all three of those breaths utilized together bring about a very um, pristine or powerful exchange in, in the transition of that energy throughout the body. And um, you will see um, the effects of it as you participate with it. I, like I said, I'm going to put a more deep, there's going to be a detailed description of uh, what the actual Wajit Head Not Guru meditation is. Um, I did, I did write down a more descriptive written commentary of how it is, um, how some of the principles are utilized and what it is good for and it's, as far as the benefits uh, of the Wajit Head Not Guru meditation. Uh, and again, Wahe Not Guru, Wahe Not Guru is a Sanskrit word that means, uh, Wahe means wondrous and Guru or Guru means um, guide, but it also is the etymology behind it, the etymology behind it in Sanskrit. It means, basically, goo means dark, gooey substance, and um, ru, or ra, means, um, one, it means um, ray of light. So it's the wondrous, dark, gooey substance within the ray of light or the wondrous dark ray of light. And we know that is um, basically dark energy, dark matter, and dark matter and dark energy is equivalent to melanin in a physical sense. So this uh, wondrous, wondrous dark ray of light, that's why that's why that's Wahe, Wahe um, Guru. Uh, in this developing of this meditation, as it came towards um, towards developing, it uh, dawned on us that it the watch it hey watch it and wait and why hey was very similar. So utilizing watch it watch it meaning uh, emerald or green as well. So watch it means emerald. He meaning infinite, Nag means wise or intelligent, and Haru means light or celestial order in this case. But we're going to utilize it as, so the, 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 what that would um, to be defined as a wise it He Nag Haru is meaning um, the emerald, infinite light of the intelligence. So that is the emerald infinite light of the intelligence, the green light of the intelligence. And that is flowing through the body. Alright, so that green light also is equivalent to um, El Kabir and El Kut. 
the occultist, the magnetic pole within Sufism that all things are attracted to. You know, Qadir is the green one that it has access to um, El Kut. So El Qadir is the energy of um, Wajit. Alright, so the spine is the El Kut. The spine being that magnetic pole that El Qadir has access to to be able to go utilize and bring out the manifestations of um, the universe or the all, so to speak, but the internal um, aspect of your highest states of being or your true nature and true self. So, bringing up this energy, letting it circulate through the body, it's going to do it naturally. It's, you don't really have to put any force to it, intent over force and all things. So, intent basically means intelligence initiate so initiate also stems back to stretching so sometimes we don't have to um, stretch too far but we do need to stretch our spiritual mind in the in the right direction to where we are not uh, forcing the issue physically too much all right so those are the three different um, meditations that are fused together and united to form the Wajit Heg Naguru and Wajit Heg Naguru again means um, the, the Emerald Infinite Light of the Intelligence so the Emerald Infinite Light of the Intelligence um, alright so the beginning of the meditation normally uh, you know sit comfortably you definitely want to have your back straight, you want to be straight so the energy can flow through the body properly. The three locks, the three, there will be four locks that we utilize within the meditation. Um, so the four locks that we are going to have is uh, first and foremost the tongue lock. That will be permanent. The tongue lock, the root, the, the tongue will be at the roof of the mouth behind the teeth. So the tongue will be right behind the teeth at the roof of the mouth and that will sit there throughout the meditation uh, minus at the end when we will relocate the tongue between the teeth and breathe out the sound ha activating heart energy and we'll go over that so we want to have the chin lock next the chin lock will be also be permanent we will hold that lock throughout the throughout the meditation the chin lock will look like this That it won't, your head won't be back like that. And it won't be down like this. Your head will be like right here. Like a string is attached to the top of your head right here. And it's dangling from heaven. This will elongate the spine from the base. And allow the flow of energy to properly go down into the bendu spot. The soft spot behind the head. Shoulders will be relaxed, back straight. Shoulders slightly dropped, not going forward, not leaning forward. Be back straight. This will relax you and keep you in your posture longer. And it will also allow the breath to go through the spine properly. You'll find uh, that you will increase in your energy level as well by sitting properly. Mo chi, mo power. You know what I'm saying? Alright, so first thing we do is stretch. Oh, the other two locks. The other two locks will be the perineum. Perineum lock as well. And the stomach lock. So the root lock, we will um, raise up the area in between the sex or the procreation vessel and the evacuation canal. So the area in between there the perineum, we will raise up on the inhalation. Well, basically, we're going to hold that, what is it, hate, not the root, throughout that. So, 
We're going to do that, watch it, hey, knock a real few times, but as we do it, as we um, perform the actual chant, we're going to rise up on the perineum. The stomach lock will not really come into play that much throughout the meditation in, that, in the aspect of the meditation when we're breathing in and then breathe out. But the stomach lock is when your stomach goes all the way to your spine. We will do that on the exhalation. So we'll breathe in and watch it. Hey, knock a roof. Say this is the last one. When we breathe out of the opposite nostril, then the stomach will go flat as possible to the spine. So that's the stomach lock. So the stomach lock is when we we have breathed in, we breathe in first, make the stomach large like a beach, I mean make the abdomen large like a beach ball. Close off the nostril, then we watch it, hey, not guru, we get to the last one, then we breathe out the opposite nostril. And we allow the abdomen to go as close as possible towards the spine. Going towards the spine in as we exhale. Keeping the shoulders straight. I mean keeping the shoulders relaxed and the back straight. Alright, so those are the four locks. The tongue lock, tongue at the roof of the mouth behind the teeth, the chin lock, chin slightly tucked, not too far down, not going up, chin slightly tucked, keeping the shoulders relaxed, down, and the back straight. The root lock, when we inhale, we bring up the perineum, the small space in between the procreation vessel and the evacuation canal, the space in between. And we also have the stomach lock. The stomach lock is on the exhalation after the last Wajitay Nagaru. The exhalation, we will bring the stomach as close, I mean the abdomen as close as possible towards the spine. Forgive me. Um, so we bring the abdomen as close towards the spine. Alright, so those are the four locks that we will utilize throughout the uh, meditation. Um, Alright, so first and foremost, we always stretch. Gotta stretch. Stretch in the mind, but you know, that's the first thing we do. But since this, this meditation is intense, it's, a, it's an advanced type of meditation, I give thanks. Um, I give thanks for the, to the ancestors for introducing um, me over, allow me to remember because this is an ancient meditation basically. Um, I know it, it has been done before for some reason. But in the, at any rate, you know what I'm saying, um, it's all in one day. So I give thanks. Alright, so first we stretch. Alright, get all up, get the energy ready. Relaxing the shoulders, breathe in, making the abdomen large like a beach ball to breathe out. Through the nose and out the nose. Bring the legs down, go slow. Breathe in here, and breathe out as you stretch into the toes. Breathe in again, breathe out as you stretch into the toes. Breathe in once again. Making the large, making the abdomen large. Breathe out. And rise up. Stretch the shoulder muscles. Bring the legs back in. This is a uh, this is up to you. This is how I stretch. You know what I'm saying? This is how, this is what I prefer as far as getting the the hands to be open. It takes a minute to get to this uh, posture, but if you are capable of stretching this way, basically don't do the bobbing. Um, you know what they call the butterfly that um, actually hinders the um, integrity of your muscles and the growth and the strength. Cause we ain't gonna be walking around bobbing like this, you know what I'm saying? So the integrity is not gonna be there. We we do need to stretch the muscle though, and stretch the tendons and ligaments that they are connected to. So hands, the elbows, I mean, are going to be into inside of the, the hamstrings, the hands located at the toes, and we breathe here. 
Pressing down as we breathe out and go deeper into the stretch. Breathe in again, making this, the abdomen large, and then breathe out as we go into the stretch. Now you can put your elbows in the creases of the calf muscles, place them in the creases of the calf muscles, breathe in, and breathe out and go deeper as possible into the stretch while pressing down on the legs. Breathe in once again, making the abdomen large, breathe out, allowing the abdomen to go as close as possible to the spine, and stretch. And breathe in once more, and then rise very slowly, so not to hurt yourself on your back, and allow the energy to move through the body properly. Then we just go into on the lotus. Always, uh, men, remember not to sit on your uh, testicles. That blocks your energy. You want to be. You want your testicles to hang off of any um, or, or don't. If you're doing it in the lotus, don't you know? Don't get them caught up in the budge. The part itself, you know. I, I drank some beer. All good. I got that. Yeah, that. Oh, so pretty nice. when we're going to the lotus, if we're going into the lotus, you can do half lotus. Half lotus is right here if you're comfortable with this. See, so the lotus, what, what's going on is you're going to be pressing the heel into the sacral nerves located down in the, in the, um, in the sacral region here. And by doing such, it's going to allow that, that pressure is going to allow the energy to shoot up on the inhalations and go into the sacral nerves and then it's fine back with the vagus nerve and then by way of the olfactory nerve in the breath. Alright, so that's why the lotus is very valuable within meditation. Alright, so if you want to do half lotus, that's how you do it. If you want to do easy pose, you can have both knees located on the ground to be a little bit more comfortable or just go into the easy pose, what we call the, the Indian, um, <laughs> the indigenous uh, posture, you know, like that. So if, you, if you're having any strains in your uh, muscles or your lower back, if you have any issues in your lower back, do not attempt to go into the lotus. Or if you have issues with your knees, make sure you have you build up the strength and in, endurance to be able to sit in the lotus for a long period of time. If you're going to utilize the lotus as your um, sitting posture, so the, the feet will be in, going into the um, sacral region. It, it takes a minute to uh, actually be able to sit in this properly and and um, and for a longer duration. I know it took me about two years to really get my legs to be able to get like to sit like this, but you know, DCD, deliberate cognitive discipline, um, practicing, you know, and, and doing other, you know, yoga as well as other exercises and exercises to develop the muscle strength as well as the integrity of the muscle and the ligaments to stretch in this manner and be able to stay, you know, saying in this in this position for a period of time. I like to lock my toe into that area as well. For some reason, it's a little comfortable. You want your back to be straight and sit at the at the most um, sit as close as possible to the edge of the pillar that you are going to be sitting on. So your knees to be comfortable and sinking into the ground. If you sit too far back, your knees might rise up. So you want to sit as close as possible to the edge of the pillar, so your knees will go. I'm only on one pillar, so I might as well be sitting on the floor. But if you got two, two pillars, the more pillars you have, the easier it is to be to sit comfortably and go towards that slant down. So your, your feet, if you're sitting in the lotus, will be at the sacral region. Um, and your shoulders going to be relaxed, your back straight, neck, neck lock, chin lock, or I mean, forgive me, chin lock, tongue lock. And we'll be utilizing the stomach, I mean the abdomen lock and the root lock throughout the meditation on 
inhalation and exhalation. Remember, the perineum or the root lock is on the inhalation, bring it up, and the abdomen lock is on the exhalation, we bring that in. Always remember to keep the shoulders relaxed. All right, so the, we start out, thumbs will be located inside the inseam of your um, thigh, I mean your, um, right at the top of your calves, right behind the knees. Just place your thumbs right there and your hands on your knees, your fingers on your knees. All right. These two points right here are spleen points going right here into the knees as well as the liver going up in this, um, this area as well. So, but your, your spleen is very powerful, the simulator of the energy that we take in from um, the, our reality so that as they are assimilated and broken down, we are allowed to um, energize or feed ourselves basically. You know what I'm saying? The cells don't eat our food, it eats the nutrients that are within the food. So when the spleen is active and producing certain um, energies properly, then it will assimilate those energies and give that information or that light to the cell. Alright, so the first part of my normal daily meditation, even when I do the YJT and I um, I always do uh, normal abdominal breathing and reverse abdominal breathing. The Buddha breath and the Taoist breath. The Buddha's breath is normal abdominal breathing. Taoist breathing is reverse abdominal breathing. So I do that about three or six times. I just go over it. Basically what that does, the normal abdominal breathing is going to um, when you, we make our abdomen large like a beach ball, it's going to allow us to massage and give an inner size to all the organs. You know what I'm saying? By pressing down on the diaphragm. All right, so when we press down on the diaphragm, the vagus nerve is going to be pressing down on the diaphragm, but it's also going to be in flux with blood around the percardian or the sac that's protecting the heart. And that will give a way to a lot of a, a beautiful energy of health and allow blood to go through the circulatory system more proficiently. Alright, so when we're breathing in, see how that raising automatically is pulling and then the exhalation allows the energy or the blood to start flowing through the organ system. So we, when we're doing the Wajit Head Naga Rule Meditation, it's the same thing, we're just doing it a little bit faster. All right. So the reverse breathing, when we breathe in, we got to also recall when we breathe in to um, notice that our diaphragm is going to want to rise. So we've got to relocate it and almost mentally, intentional force, don't force it, but we have to relocate it and, put it and allow it to go sink back down. So when we breathe in, on the reverse breathing, we'll notice the chest start to get tight and the diaphragm rising. So relax the chest as much as possible. And allow the diaphragm to go back down before exhalation. Then exhale. So we do three breaths like that. So we do one that's breathing in through the nose, six seconds. Hold for three in the sternum or the south solar plexus region. Then breathe out, six seconds, and rest for three. Then we do the reverse breathing, so we breathe in, allow the abdomen to go towards the spine. Six seconds, hold for three. And then we exhale for six seconds. Then rest for three. Then one more, abdomen large. Hold for three, sternum, and then we exhale for six, and rest for three. Then we do reverse breathing. Reverse breathing, abdomen goes towards the spine. Hold for three, and 
breathe out and relax perineum. Remember, we bring up the perineum on each inhalation or in heaven, and then we relax the perineum on the exhalation. All right, so that will start to stimulate um, the energy. It's like a hydraulic pressure. It's going to stimulate the energy in the lower abdomen and allow it to start moving up and through the body. All right, so just start generating it and stimulating it. All right, so now, after that, the hands were located here. So we breathe in and start to rise our hands up and over our head to the apex where the, the crown is, right over our head. And then as we sink down, we breathe out and place the thumbs, the back, back of the thumbs, right into the sternum region. And you'll notice that it will fit there perfectly. So we locate them there, keep a 45 degree angle on our elbows. This process here, what's going on is, we are stimulating the vagus and the olfactory nerves. We are opening up the way here. The olfactory nerves is the nostril, the nose, breathing, the lungs. The vagus nerve is the wandering nerve, located connecting the pons all the way down the central nervous system with the intertwining of all those nerves going through the spine and, and connecting to all the organs. It's also connected, like I was saying, it's connected to the diaphragm. So when we do this here, the diaphragm being located here, it's raising the diaphragm, bringing oxygen into the heart, allowing the blood to be stimulated on the exhalation, and the blood starts moving through body and circulation. Alright, so here, I normally go through uh, some chants, but uh, you can do what you do, you know what I'm saying? So here, um, you know, if you have an attribute, new poo, I am, so and so, or what, whatever the case may be, you can go through that here. Um, but basically, just um, Settle your mind and, and find your center. Always stay in your center. Um, those transitory thoughts that may come, you know, remember they are transitory. They're just, they're just floating on by, they're transversing. You know, they're just, they're just travelers on the road, you know. They'll be there just like you. Say hey, wave to the thoughts and allow them to keep moving. All right, so just slow your breath and pay attention to the breath. Feel it going through the body, notice every sensation in the body, and keep the count. The count will help with distractions from the external thoughts that we think that we own. Breathe in. Feel the energy in the fingertips of your hands the blood flowing or the chi, the prana, feel that energy going through that, through the fingertips and through the palms of your hands while you're breathing. Breathe in through the palms of your, of your hands, lung out points or the five points, the worker's palace. And breathe out the palms. Now we float the hands do it how you want, but you float the hands in this particular manner, men, your, right, your left hand on bottom, right hand on top, women, um, right hand on bottom, left hand on top. So we float the hands down, and it's the sun and moon mudra, sun and moon, sun holds the moon. And relax. Remember to relax the shoulders. Then what we do is we will bring the right hand up for men, women. Use right here. You bring your left hand up. So we bring the right hand up, men. Left hand for women. Or the queens. Left hand, kings. Right hand. We're going to place our thumb. We place the thumb on the right nostril. Right thumb on the right nostril. 
and we're just going to put our index finger, our right index finger, in the in the brow region, in the mid brow region, the osmo or the um, first eye region, and we're going to breathe in one, just um, just three counts, and then breathe out very briskly, clearing out the not the nasal, making sure there is no uh, no excess um, mucus in your nasal passage. Then we do the same for the opposite nostril. So we just get our middle finger, keeping this, let that stay here, remain on the um, the first eye region. We're going to close off. We're going to close off the left passage with our middle finger and release, release the thumb off the right nostril. So we breathe in at three seconds. Then. Breathe out very vigorously to release any excess. Then we're going to go back and close off the right nostril with the right thumb, and we're going to breathe in for seven seconds on through the left nostril. So we breathe in for seven seconds, making the abdomen large like a beach ball, ball holding the uh, wisdom mudra with the left hand for men and right right hand for the queens. And so we're holding that, relaxing the shoulders, hold, we just held, got inhaled for seven seconds. Now we close off, part self train is coming. Now we're gonna close off the, um, the left nostril with the middle finger and we begin to watch it, hey, not the root part of the meditation where we will say the chant and pump the stomach in and out all right, so it'll be, we're holding the breath, simultaneously pumping. So, watch it, hey, not guru. Watch it, hey, not haru. 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 We get to seven, then we exhale out the opposite nostril, allowing the abdomen to go as close as possible to the spine. So, and staying relaxed but keeping the back straight, okay? So we breathe in again. Now we breathe in the opposite nostril. We're holding down the left nostril still with our middle finger, keeping, just keeping the index finger at the third eye region, the first eye region, all the while. Tongue is at the roof of the mouth behind the teeth. The chin lock is being performed and we are doing the perineum lock or root lock on the inhalation and the stomach lock, I mean the abdomen lock on the exhalation. So we breathe in for second, seven seconds through the right nostril. Breathe in for seven seconds, making the abdomen large like a beach ball. Close off the right nostril. Then we go into the watch it, hey, not nah, guru. 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 Watch it, hey. Nah, Watch it, hey, not nah, guru. Do that seven times, then we go back and we release the oxygen out of the left nostril. Seven seconds. Then rest. Now we breathe in the left nostril. Making the abdomen large like a beach ball. Breathe in for seven seconds. Close off. Then watch it, hey, not nah, guru. Watch it, hey, not nah, guru. Watch it. Hey, not 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 guru. Then breathe out the opposite nostril, making the abdomen large like a beach ball. So now this one we're gonna go. So we're gonna make sure that we since we started with um, we started on the uh, left. So we're going to end on the right to keep them balanced. So we're going to, but you can go as many rounds as you as you choose. But I would start out with say seven rounds on each. You know what I'm saying? Um, I I did say for uh, nine, fifteen, thirty-six, nine, fifteen, eighteen, thirty-six. So nine rounds. That means one round would be a complete cycle. Cycle. I mean a uh, cycle. That will be um, starting out right here. Watch it in the group, then breathing out. That's one round. 
So this will be, say this is the ninth round right here, and we're closing it out. So we breathe in, seven seconds. Now we watch it, hey, not the root, 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 watch it, hey, not the root. Do that seven times, then breathe out of the opposite nostril, the left nostril, since this is closing. Seven seconds, allow the abdomen to go as close as possible to the spine, releasing the perineum lock, going into the stomach lock. Then after that, just bring your hand down and go into what is called holding the mind mudra. Holding the mind mudra is you grab the right thumb with the right hand, like a circle, and then you close it off and you're stimulating the pituitary gland and the pineal gland. The pituitary gland is located in the inseam of the thumb. The pineal gland reflex point is located on the back of the thumb at the top. So just to stimulate both. After we have uh, relaxed, we take our initial breath through the nose, bringing the hands to hold the, hold the mind mudra, relax. Breathing through the nose for seven seconds. Allow the energy to come up to the back of the spine with the color red affixed to it. So it's coming up the spine. Allow it to come over and down. And when it, when it comes around, like the microcosmic orbit, and it gets relocated at the spine again, breathe in twice through the mouth. And that's the acolyzing breath. The acidifying breath and the acolyzing breath. Now, we fix the color black to it. It was red, now it's black now. It comes up the spine again. And as it comes up the spine, this time, we're going to allow the energy, the black color, with the black color affixed to it in the breath, to go out of the bendu spot, the soft spot in the back of the head, and up into um, the all. So it'll come up and on, up along the spine, then out of the bender spot, up and out of the bender spot, with the color black affixed to it. Okay? While holding the mind movement, it's still um, being activated and performed. So we stay relaxed. Back is straight. So we just breathe in. Color red. Allow to go up the spine. Color red and the breath is going to be through the nose. Allow to go over the head, down to um, central, down to um, governing vessel. I mean the conception vessel in the front. And then when it gets to reach the back to the conception, I mean the governing vessel, spine in the back, breathe in twice through the mouth and allow the energy to go up with the color of black affixed to it. And then when it reaches the top of the brain, top of the head, at the bendu spot, the soft spot, allow the energy, the black color, to go up and out towards the all. Now we now we count to 81. So it would be one, two, three, four, five. You can do it internally in the mind. We count to 81 while holding the breath all the while from the initial breath with the red color and the black color, holding it for 81 to 108 counts, heartbeats. 108 heartbeats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. That will be the count. Once we get to the 81 or 108, depending on the one who is performing the meditation, I always go to 81 myself. It's, it's kind of, I'm telling you, it's intense. Once you get to that 70, you're like, you about to explode. But we get to 81, and we're going to see the color green now. We're going to transform the color black to green. And we're going to use that color and allow it, as we breathe out, we're going to place the tongue right between the teeth. 
and we're going to breathe out by imagining green being um, in flux throughout the entirety of your body. You want the color green to start at the top of your body, at the top of your head, and just flood and be indigenated uh, with the color green. You know what I'm saying? Immerse yourself in the color green all the way throughout your body. Your head, down to your ears, your neck, your shoulders, all the way down both shoulders, your abs, your chest, and then your abs, your thighs, all the way down to your feet. And really feel that energy going down through every part of your being, from, from the, uh, the cellular, to the molecular, to the atomic, to the subatomic regions of yourself. Alright, so on that exhalation, see that color green just flowing all the way through. And you're going the whole time. Alright, so no matter how long it is, just make sure you go through the whole body with that color green, stimulating it and allow and see it. Really see it and know it. Know it's healing, know it's power. And know it's you, you know what I'm saying? That's the emerald light right there. That's the emerald, infinite light of the intelligence flowing through your, the entirety of your being. And giving you, and you're becoming the green one. You're becoming Gab, Asir. Alright? You are already. You're just giving the light back to the darkness. So, all the way down. Allow it to go all the way to the toes. Then we sit here and relax for a few rounds. Normal breathing, just breathe in. Make the abdomen large like a beach ball and breathe out. There's about no count on this one, just there's no uh, definite count. You, you can count if you choose, but just breathing in, relaxing. And breathe out. So, this um, type of meditation will increase the heat or the temperature of the body and may cause you to perspire. But in that, you will start to sweat somewhat. It will also, the sweating will regulate the heat and bring the heat back down. And I, like I, I put it in the description, but basically with most of the cemetery, um or to watch the cemetery practices, some of them generate heat in general, and that's it. Like the um, we're doing the watch the cemetery yoga um, qigongs, watch the cemetery qigongs, or um, the tear shu. Uh, basically, we are um, doing um, relaxation and tension, so that's going to bring a lot of heat to the body. But it's also going to strengthen what that does is strengthen the sinews as well. So, like the reverse breathing is bringing up, is bringing the energy out. When we a uh, deep abdominal normal breathing is bringing the energy in, and it's doing something for the organs. The reverse breathing is going to be doing something for the um, to um, build our basically. Um, electromagnetic field, the bioelectromagnetic field is going to go to the subcutaneous areas of the body and um, build a, a pretty much a barrier between what's coming in. So all those different external things that may try to come towards us, you know, so many different things out here in these overtones that uh, these uh, littles are trying to um, throw at us by putting that right there, by Breathing in, we bring the energy that we have acquired through obtaining, retaining, and cultivating the energy properly. We bring that energy outward, and it brings about that electromagnetic field, or the bioelectromagnetic field. All right, so in closing, we go through the microcosmic orbit. All right, so the microcosmic orbit basically is points throughout the, the governing and the conception vessel channels. 
governing and conception channels. Governing channels is uh, located on the, the spine. The conception channel is located in the front. All right, so what, what you do is basically it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, breathe out here. You can count it like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, breathe out. Allow the engine to go back around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, breathe out. Women, the opposite direction, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, breathe out when it gets to the back of the neck at the pond region. Allow the engine to go down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, breathe in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, breathe out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and breathe in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, breathe out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, men again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, breathe out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When it gets to the third and fifth vertebrae, same in the front. The women it'll be about an inch below the belly button. Men it'll be the third, fifth lumbar vertebrae in the back, in between that area. So we're breathing in that area, allow the energy to go up the spine, around for eight, so eight counts, breathe out here. Allow the energy on the inhalation as you relax to go around, then we breathe in again. Form a chi ball each time you're breathing in. See that chi ball or that, you know, that ball of light going around. That's the blastular cells and circulating in form of that Merkel ball. We're in the opposite direction. All right, so that's uh, that's the Watch and Hidden Guru meditation. Um, after you do the, after you have performed the microcosmic orbit, and we'll be sitting. By that time, you know the hands, the hand that came down, we'll go. We'll be in holding the mind mudra. You're gonna breathe in through the mind, holding the mind mudra as well. My bad, but when we are, when we go through the meditation at the, towards the end, we're going through towards the um, finalizing the watch the hidden guru. You breathe in through the hold your mind meditation, hold your mind mudra. Holding the mind mudra. And we hold we breathe in for seven seconds, allow the energy to go up, then we breathe in, then we're holding the breath, coming around, and back under, then we breathe in twice. We're holding the mind mudra, we breathe in through the mind mudra. See the spiraling energy go up the spine and then out the black color going out of the bendu spot towards mother mother arm um, space. Alright. And then the hands were here. Bring them back to prayer hands, Buddha hands. Hotel hands, peace, in peace. You locate them at the sternum. Relax. Keep them a straight path. Men. Right hand on the bottom. I mean, left hand on bottom, right hand on top. Women, right hand on bottom, left hand on top. You're just gonna breathe in. One, two, three, four, five. And you breathe out. One, two, three, four, five. Then you switch the hands. Breathe in, go in the opposite direction. One, two, three, four, five. And breathe out. One, two, three, four, five. And relax. And place the hands back as they were from the onset. Breathe in. And then breathe out. <sighs> Allow the abdomen to go as close as possible. Don't force it with your hands, but you can push it towards the abdomen with uh, subtle energy. Intent over matter always, intent over force. Don't try to force it and push it in too hard, just but breathe in. Make the abdomen large like a beach ball and breathe out. And do that three times. Then after that, on the third one, so breathe in. Open the eyes and go back to where we started with the thumbs in the
that's the circulatory system of the planet Earth right now, and with the iron, uh, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> train tracks, blood and everything. But um, so we relocate the thumbs in the crevices of the um, of the knees, and we relax. And then we just pretty much do everything in reverse that we did earlier. Stretch in and stretch out. You know what I'm saying? So go back and stretch again. Exhale as we stretch. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Hold it. Stretch the shoulder blades, the back muscles, and the neck, as well as the toes, the calves. Stretch the whole body here. And then exhale. And relax. 